Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and understanding of His Word. If you can tell today, I'm a little giddy, I'm a little excited, because this is one of my most favorite subjects that I love talking about and I love revealing to people. Remember in the dietary law, I mentioned that there are other anomalies in the Bible that pretty much got me fascinated with the Bible in the first place. So we are going to have a Bible study about that today. Now, a lot of you have no idea about this. You never heard it. And I guarantee you 100% that your Christian church never taught you anything about this here at all. So you're going to learn it today and you are going to see why it is so important to you as Israel. Not only that, but if this doesn't surprise a lot of people, I'm going to be shocked that if you've never known this before, you'll be like, wow, I've, I've never heard that. I, I didn't even put it in my mind or it was never even put into my mind. But I guarantee you, they subliminally put this in your mind. All right. So let's jump right into this. So we're going to be reading today from Job chapter 41. Now, remember, I read from the 1611 King James Version Bible. And I've told you in the past how you can download it and all that good stuff. So hopefully by now you have it. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right into Job chapter 41. And I'm going to start at verse one. Now, this is going to be one of those Bible studies where I'm breaking things down. So remember, open your Bible and read along. All right. So here we go. Job 41. Now, let me give a little history really quick before I go into this. Now, this, remember, the, the book of Job is the most high putting his foot right on Job's throat because Job kind of started feeling himself a little bit. So now the most high is heating Job up and he's asking him a lot of questions. You know, in other words, Job tried to flare up and the most high had to go ahead and punch him in his chest and deflate him a little bit, you know, and let him know like, yo, wait a second, hold on. I'm God. You know, I made you. Okay. You didn't make me. Who are you to question me? All right, so this is a continuation or this is a reading of the questions that God is asking Job, okay? But God asked Job a question about something, about this, about this thing that we get ready to learn about. And it completely blew my mind. And you'll see why later it has, but let's go ahead and get into this. So Job chapter 41, starting at verse 1. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a with an hook or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? So let's stop really quick. So now Job is asking God, I'm excuse me, God is asking Job about this thing that has a name and its name is Leviathan. So this is something that's physical. Its name is Leviathan. And God is asking Job here, can you draw him out with a hook? So in other words, can you put something, a hook into the water, catch this thing and, and reel it in and draw him out with a hook? Or, and it says, or his tongue with a cord, which thou let us down. So are you able to grab this thing's tongue with a cord and pull it out? So right now, God is talking about a something that's physical, that has a name, and it has a tongue. So it's living. Okay, let's continue. Verse two. Canst thou put an hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? So now God is asking Job, okay, so can you put a hook in its nose? So the thing has a nose. Or could you put a thorn, which means like a, a, a knife, something sharp in its jaw? So now we see it has a name, it has nostrils, it has a jawbone. So this is a living thing and it has a tongue. So it's getting somewhere, right? And we know it's not a human being. Let's continue. Verse three. Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? All right. So now let's break that down. So, of course, supplication, that means to beg. Will it make, will it beg you? Will it ask you favorably? And it says that the thing speaks. So, is it talking about a human being? 
You don't fish people. You don't fish people with hooks. <laughs> There's not people that you can launch something out to, put a hook in his mouth, or whatever, and reel it in. So the <laughs> so the Most High is asking Job about this creature that speaks. Let's continue. Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Now, thou means you. So the Most High is asking Job here, will he make a covenant with thee? So in other words, will he keep it as a pet? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? So will you take this thing as a pet and train him and break him down and make him your servant like a blind, like a blind-eyed dog or whatever they're called, a service animal. <laughs> will thou play with him as with a bird, or will thou bind him for thy maiden? So God is saying, okay, so are you gonna be able to play with thing, play with this thing, holding your hand like a bird, you know, or like you take a ball and throw it and tell your dog go catch it and bring it back, or will you have this thing bound on a leash or on a chain so that your maidens, your your women, your females can come by and pet it. Are you are you able to do that with this thing? Let's see. Verse five, oh, excuse me, verse six. Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? So he's saying, okay, so are you gonna be able to kill this thing and make a banquet out of it? What does that mean? Are you gonna be able to kill this thing and chop it up and eat it and serve it to the people? Will thou, excuse me, uh, I'm, I, sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied here. Shall they part him among the merchants? So are you going to be able to take this thing, cut his body up like you do cattle or chicken and sell it to supermarkets? Will you be able to eat off of this thing? All right, verse seven. Now, here's where I want you to really start paying attention. Verse seven. Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish bears? So now God is getting a little bit more deeper into this. God is saying, are you going to be able? Can you fill his skin with barbed irons? Now, if you don't know what that is, that's spears, you know, like, um, like barbed wire, these sharp edges, these instruments of torture, pretty much, that you can shoot into a person and like rip it out and their flesh and stuff starts coming out. They used to make these things, they still do. But today they're bullets and, and more things of that nature. But God is saying, are you able to penetrate the skin of this animal? Oh, this creature, I don't even call it an animal, it's a creature. Or his head with, with fish spears. So are you gonna be able to shoot this thing in the head with a spear like they did Moby Dick or like they do whales and all that? And if God, God is asking, can you do this thing to this, to this creature? Lay thine hand upon him, remember the battle, do no more. So are you able to put your hands on this thing and kill it? And kill it so easily that you don't even remember that you did it? Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? Let's stop for a second. So now the Most High is saying, wait a second. So all of your hopes of doing anything like that to this creature is in vain, which means it is pointless. You can't do it. But not only that, you see what the next, what the next, the very next verse says? Will you even be able to look at this thing without dying? Cast down means to die. Cast down means to be put to destruction. So the very sight of this creature makes men die just by looking at him. <laughs> All right, let's go. Verse 10. None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? So God is saying, guess what? People have seen this thing before. They've seen him. And at the sight of him, they drop dead. So God is saying, for those that even dare try to stand up to this thing, y'all can't deal with this thing. You can't deal with Leviathan. 
What the hell makes you think somebody can stand up to me? Now, God made something that is so frightening that the, the, the sight of it will kill you. And this is a physical thing. This is a physical creature that when you look at it, you die. So God is like, wait a so can you imagine what God looks like? <laughs> I mean, for real. Now, we know that God has a head, a body, and everything. We are made in his image. So God looks like a man. But the thing is, what type, what does God look like? If this thing here, we can't even look at this. Something that he created and put on earth. But we're not done yet. Let's, let's continue. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. So God is saying, okay, so who has rose up against me and beat me that I have to repay him? So God is saying, and I want you to pay attention to this. God said, everything under the heaven belongs to me. I made everything. Let's continue. Verse 12. I will not conceal. I'm going to read that again, and I want you to pay attention. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. I want you to get that. God is saying, I'm not going to conceal his size. I'm not going to stop anyone from seeing how big this thing is. I will not conceal his parts. That's his body parts. His power. I'm not going to stop his parts. Power. So this thing is powerful. Nor his comely proportion, his gigantic size. His big, beautiful, gigantic size. God said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop any man from seeing that and get you, like I said, this this is going somewhere. You're going to see. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can Come with him with his double bridle. So God is, so now, this, you, are you familiar with horses? When they blind horses and they put those blinders on them like this and they put the bridles on them. So God is saying, who's going to be able to mount up on this creature and tame it to the point where you can put blinders on them and put a bridle on them so that you can ride it? You can't, it doesn't look like you can do that, does it? Who can open the doors of his face? Talk about his mouth. His teeth are terrible round about. So I want y'all to make sure that you're paying attention to this. So now the Most High is describing this animal and mentioning all of its body parts. So this is not a metaphor. This is an actual physical being that the Most High is talking about. He made, because he said he made everything under the heavens. And he said his teeth are terrible. So you know what that is? That's like the razor sharp teeth. I know y'all have seen some of those sea creatures with like rows and rows and rows of those extra sharp teeth. So this thing has that. But let, let, let's continue. Verse 15. His scales are his pride. Shut up together as with close seals. So this thing has scales. Now, we know the animals on the planet that have scales are reptiles. So this big, enormous, comely, proportionate, big, big reptile, God said that its scales are so close together that you can't put anything through it. Verse 16. One is so near to each other that no air can come between it. So this thing is an armor. Its scales are an armor and it's latched together so that not even air can get through it. Not even air. And air can cut through anything. Air goes through buildings, but it can't do it to this animal. Verse 17. They are joined to, excuse me, they are joined one to another. They stick together. They cannot be sundered. Sundered means split apart. So these things are armored so close together that it can't be sundered. It means ripped. Anything, there's nothing that can penetrate the scales of this being. By his kneesings, a light doth shine, and his eyes 
are like the eyelids of the morning. Neesing means sneezing. I'm going to read this again. By his sings a light doth shine. So when this thing sneezes, so it's able to sneeze. And when it sneezes, it emits a light out of its nose. <laughs> Verse 19. Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to continue. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. So this thing breathes smoke out of its nose. Out of his mouth go burning lamps. His breath kindleth coals and a flame go out of his mouth. Do y'all get what this thing is? This is a big reptile that its skin cannot be penetrated. No weapon can be formed against it. And it has fire that comes out of its mouth. Verse 22. In his neck remaineth strength and sorrow is turned into joy before him. And I want to expound on that there. In his neck remaineth strength. So this thing is so big, just in his neck alone. Just think of, think of Mike Tyson back in the day. Remember his little big old 19 inch neck and how indestructible Mike Tyson was back then? So let's say this is the Mike Tyson of the reptile kingdom. All right, we'll just say that. And sorrow is turned into joy before him. Sorrow is turned into joy. So now what's sorrow? Sorrow is sadness. And you're going to see what this means. Sorrow is turned into joy. Remember that. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. So the flakes of his skin. Now, of course, for those of you that have dry skin, you know that there is, once it gets so bad that your skin starts to flake up, right? This being's dry skin cannot even be penetrated. What the hell did God make? <laughs> let's see. Let's, let's finish. Verse 24. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. So his heart is as thick and as hard as a stone. Let's continue. When he raiseth up the mighty, remember that, the mighty, the mighty, the mighty, because now God is starting to talk about who this is, who these people are, and who are to be afraid of this thing. The mighty are afraid by reason of breakings, they purify themselves. Did you hear what the Most High God just said there? The mighty are so afraid of these things by the, excuse me, I'm reading this again. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. So if you don't know what that means, that means that they are so afraid of this thing, when they look at it, when they see it, they shit themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold the spear, the dart, nor the harbogen. So the Most High is saying all of the weaponry, the, sp the, the spear, the dart, and the harbogen. It's talking about bullets, harpoons, and missiles. None of these things are able to penetrate this Creature. So now, why is it talking about all of these weapons? What, what, there's so much weaponry. Why this arsenal? Because there's, remember, we talked about this. In the last days, these armies are going to try to go up against the Most High. I think this is probably starting to make sense for some of you. They are going to be trying to, trying to kill this, this, this being, and it won't be able to do a damn thing to it. But I don't want to get I don't want to get ahead myself. Let's continue with this. Verse 27. He esteemeth iron as straw and brass as rotten wood. So now 
Let's talk about that. He is st- so what is what it's saying? It's really easy. Brass and all these alloys of metals, the strongest metal on earth. He takes these things and crumbles it. He said he crumbles it that it's almost like rotted wood. Have you ever seen when wood rots and how easy it is that you're able to break it? Brass and all these metals, he can just take and crunch without even thinking about it completely effortlessly. So this thing is a destructible monster that absolutely nothing can beat, nothing can penetrate. The only thing that can control this being is God. Let's continue. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. So it's saying there is no weapon that can make this thing run. It is absolutely fearless and it can't be penetrated. And I want to read, I want to read 28 again. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. So when they shoot these things, when they are shooting this weaponry at this being, when it hits it, it crumbles like dust. And it falls right off of him. Now, the very next verse, <laughs> look, look at the watch this. Look at look at the next verse. Look at this. Darts are counted as stubble. Now you know what stubble is. Now you see like after like when a fire happens and the charred remains, what usually happens? You pick it up and things start to crumble, right? Watch what this being does. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. The thing laughs. So now we read earlier that for one, it has a tongue, it speaks. And it laughs. So there's this big giant creature. This huge reptilian, probably dinosauric looking creature, right? That speaks and laughs. I'm telling y'all, y'all have no idea what was on this planet. During the times of our ancestors, you have no idea. The things that they saw, we are going to see again too. Because remember, God is talking to Job and asking Job about this thing. So which means Job has seen this before. This was normal. Let's continue. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. Now it's saying that on his chest, on his stomach, on his belly, there are these sharp, these sharp stones, probably like these razor cut like stones that go like when he walks, like when it drags the floor, like it cuts the marsh because that's what, let me go back to it so you can get a better understanding. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. Now mire means marsh and like um, swamp. It's pretty much like the swamp that it cuts through that when it walks. I don't know about you, but this damn thing is frightening. Verse 30. Excuse me, verse 31. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. Let's stop. So this thing lives in the sea. And the thing is so hot that it makes the area around him boil. It said it makes the sea like an ointment. So when you put, it makes the sea thick. So around this thing, so when this thing is in the water and in its surrounding areas, the sea gets so thick that you can actually go into the sea if you're able to able to touch it and put it on your skin like an ointment. What the hell is this thing? Let's continue. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Let's stop. So now, when this thing goes into the water, where it lives, the thing emits light off of its body. 
The light is so bright off of its body that when it's in the deep of the ocean, it makes the top of the water look whitish gray. That's what hoary means. Hoary means a whitish gray color. That is how bright this thing is when it emits light off of its body. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth, there is not his like who is made without fear. So what it says, there is nothing that walks on the earth that is like this thing. Why? Because it's in the sea. Now, in another book of Job, it talks about Behemoth. Now, Behemoth is this big, I would say, brontosaurus-like creature that God talks about there. And like I said, we'll get into that one. That's another lesson. I'm going to save that one. But that's not the only animal. Behemoth lived on land. Leviathan is of the sea. This is the most important part of this entire, this entire chapter. Let's read this. He beholdeth all things high. He is a king over all the children of pride. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, why is that important? The children of pride? He's a king over the children of pride. So what is a king? A king is a ruler to do what he wants. So now we're going to find out who are the children of pride. Now, there's a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. Remember, there are weapons being fired at this thing. So, of course, you always know there are precepts. And you know how big I am on precepts. So now we are going to go to the book of Obadiah. For those of you that don't... Let me shut up. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I don't want to give it away. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. The book of Obadiah. We're going to start reading at verse 1. Because only one chapter. We're going to read verse 1. Listen close. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. 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 We have heard a rumor from the Lord. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. There it is. So as you see here, Leviathan is the king of the children of pride. But like I said, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves yet. But who is Obadiah referencing right now? It's referencing Edom. And Edom is talking about that they're going to rise up and go against somebody in battle. So remember the weaponry that we were reading in Job 41? And all the weapons that were going against this thing was just not working, right? Jump down to verse 3. The pride. I'm going to read it again. The pride. I'm going to read it again. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Who are the children of the pride? Edom. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Those who go running and hiding in the mountains, making their bunkers. They even have TV shows about it. All of these war, what are they like? These, these, these end time shows that they have. And you've seen them. You may not watch them, but you've seen commercials. Like I said, you nobody nobody can play with this Bible. This Bible told everything that they do. His habitation is high, them living in skyscrapers and all that craziness. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Their pride. Ain't nobody gonna be able to beat me. I'm for we're gods. And we know that they're not. But who's gonna be able to beat? They, that's how prideful they are. They say, ain't nobody gonna be able to beat us. And the Most High is up there laughing, like, watch what I got in store for y'all. Verse four, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, now we've talked about that before, the eagle is the symbol of the Edomites, and thou that set thy nest amongst the stars. So we all know who's going up there. 
Ain't no black people going up there in space. Here from Earth. Nobody going up there. That's them up there. With all their space stations and, and satellites and all that stuff. Come on, man. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So, what is the Most High saying with all this here? If you didn't pick up on this, Edom are the children of the pride. And the Most High said that their pride deceives them. Why? Because they think that they can't be beaten. So in the last days, not only are Christ and the chariots coming with fire, but the Most High created a monster named Leviathan that breathes fire, that breathes fire. And he is going to call him up out of that sea and sick him, sick his pet amongst the Edomites. Y'all have no idea what this Bible is about. You have no idea. This is the one of the craziest things that I've ever read in my life. And guess what? Your Christian church didn't teach you nothing about that. Did you ever know that there was a fire breathing dragon living in the sea which did, which is there right now that is why these edomites are so enamored they are so crazy when it comes to them going down in the sea with all these submarines deep sea exploration and all that stuff they're looking for leviathan now you know why they do this but what does the most high say about this what i do am i no i haven't lost it oh no i didn't hear it is right here i want you to go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 16 and verse 21. Not Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus, the book of Sirach. And verse 16, excuse me, chapter 16 and verse 21. I'm going to read this. It is a tempest which no man can see. For the most part of his works are hid. Who's his? God's work. So what is this saying right here? And as a matter of fact, I want you guys to read all of this, this chapter. Ecclesiasticus chapter 16. I want you to read all. I want you to read it on your own so you can get a really good understanding because we just covered a lot. But this thing right here, what, what it's saying is in verse 21 is that the works of the Most High, his anger, his tempest. Tempest means his anger. The things of his anger are hidden. It can't be seen by man. That includes tornadoes, whirlwinds, hurricanes, all these things. And those are things that can't be seen. But this here is an actual physical manifestation. This is a real creature that breathes fire and lives in the sea. So let me take a moment to present you with something really quick.
Did you see that? Just when you don't think they know what's going to happen to them, they know. I tell y'all that over and over and over. They know what's coming to them. They know their outcome. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with the term Zilla. Now, Zilla means big reptilian creature. And they just so happened to make a movie where they put God in front of Zilla. So what does that translate to? God's big reptilian creature. And they put all these things right in front of your face, right in front of our faces. They do it all the time. Just when you think that this is somebody's imagination, it's not, it's the Bible. They've always known what's going to happen to them. And that's why they put it in movies to prepare their people for what's coming. And it's not just here with Godzilla. It's also with all of these UFO movies. Because the UFOs are the chariots. And what do they always do with each, all of these movies where the, there's these big animals, these big monsters and UFOs, what happens? The world comes together to fight against them. It happens in every movie. Why do you think the movie industry is so big and so large? They know what's happening. But guess what, Israel? None of those things are meant to destroy you. So when you follow the commandments, you're saved from all of that. Why? Because we're going to be taken in chariots and they're also going to be taking us and sending us away when all these things happen. And why? Because they had us in captivity and the Most High is like, okay, you see what you did to my people? We are getting ready to catch wreck on each and every last one of you. Every one of you that has something to do with what you've done to my people. We are about to bring this fire. And they all know it. Because Godzilla is big in Japan, it's, it's, it's world renowned. And so are movies about the UFOs. They have been preparing this for a very long time. And I believe his name was Orson Welles or whatever. It's the world, the world's thing. They was doing this way back then. I mean, even before then, this goes on even back to the 1800s where they were preparing people for things coming out of the sky. Why? Because they knew that those end times are close and they're even closer now. So Israel, when I'm talking to y'all about this, y'all have to be aware of all the things that's getting ready to go down. I don't know about you. I don't want to deal with that damn thing. I want to be cheering it as you watch it come up. Do you understand about the, uh, a day that's coming in the future where all of these Edomites are going to be puffed up with pride and they're going to be walking on this earth thinking that they are the master of weaponry. And the, and the Mosai is going to be like, Leviathan, get up, sick them. And they're done. Remember when it said that 
their, their his sorrow will turn into joy because these things are going to be seeing this and fearing and crapping themselves and dying on the spot and he is going to be laughing at these Edomites when it happens they're, they're going to be shooting his weapons off and this thing is going to be laughing and so lighting them up with fire so fire is like I said is coming from the sky fire is coming from the ground from these and from this animal and who even who even knows if there's only one it only mentions one but who knows but we know it's God, we know it's God's pet the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone that's what I'm telling you y'all gotta get in this Bible y'all gotta get in here and read so that's why these last days, this is why Jesus described the last days of weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is not going to be a good time on this planet. It will be for the one third, those of us striving for perfection. Those of us keeping these commandments, it's going to be great for us. But for everybody else, even the rebellious two third Israelites, they're going to be a part of that fire. All because you didn't want to believe. Or because, oh man, I can't get with that. I'm with the comedic community. Or I'm with Egyptology. Or uh, I, 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 I'm with Islam or whatever. Knowing that none of those things are for you. None of them. But that's what's coming to this planet. And it's going to happen. And it's in the sea right now. Waiting. Waiting for the Most High to raise it up and send it out. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. <laughs> this is, it's an awesome thing, and it really, really is. Now, again, I want you guys to really jump into your Bibles and start reading it. If that doesn't influence someone to get in this book and see the anomalies in this book, then, I mean, I guess it's not for you. But I remember, like, it was these stories here that was like, wait a second, okay. What they're telling us, something is wrong. Uh, I know. No, <laughs> I knew something was wrong when I sat in church because it didn't feel right. And I know now that was the most high being like, get out, get out, get out, get out. I'm going to keep punching to you. Get out, get out, get out, get out of there. Get out and actually read. Get from under the spell. Stop smoking Christian crack. Get out and pick up this book. Start keeping my commandments so I can open you to understand what's going to happen and what you need to be doing. And not only what you need to be doing, but what you need to be teaching so that other people can start teaching too. So that my people, the ones that I chose, can start teaching everybody else of our people, not the other nations. When I say that, I mean our people. And Israel, there you have it. Leviathan. So every time you see Godzilla come on TV, you better get up and start dancing and praising because guess what? They know what's happening to them and you read what's going to happen to them. Done. Why? All because of you. Because the Most High made the world for your sake. And that's it. And with that being said, uh, Israel, I thank you for spending this time with me to learn this word. And remember, Israel, I love y'all. I really, really do. And the kingdom is ours. So let's continue to have that hope. All right? Let's let's take care of each other and let's love each other. And that's it. Israel, I love y'all. I'm out.